Yo guys, welcome back to my channel. In this series, we are going to be talking about CICD, or Continuous Integration, Continuous Deployment, or Continuous Inspection, Continuous Deployment, Delivery, whatever you want to call it. We're going to break down what exactly the differences are between those things, um, and also go through what the hell CICD is and why it's important. So, starting at the very start, uh, if you work with anything to do with software delivery or anything to do with writing code, whether or not be scripts or applications that launch rockets, whatever it is, CICD is really important. So I want to cover why that is, um, and I first want to start talking about CI or continuous integration. So CI, what is CI and what is the purpose of it? CI is essentially there to keep everyone who's working on a team or everyone who's building a piece of software or whatever it is in sync, right? So it's all about having a collaborative event between all of the people who are involved in building something and keeping them in sync. And the way that that happens is through automated testing and validation and feedback. So say that we're all building this piece of software. You know, I, me and my five colleagues are building a piece of software. What we do is we create this software, you know, we're, we're writing it and we write tests for it, of course, as well. So you create a test suite, right? You have a bunch of tests that are associated with it. You also might create some linting rules, things that you might say, hey, we want to use arrow functions instead of ES5 crap. You know, it's all about ES6, ES6, right? So we want to make sure we're using all the latest and greatest um, of the syntax. So we build all this sort of stuff into it, things that are relative to us and things that we care about. So I could be building away on this locally and I have my own fork, right? I'm working in a, in a dev branch on a fork of my own, right? Because I have the code stored in GitHub, right? And we're all working on our own forks. And you know, what we want to do is we want to essentially, you know, build this application, build this feature and sort of merge this feature that we're building into the main line, right? So when we do that, we need to know that what we're doing is going to be accepted and going to integrate into the main line really well and actually run correctly. So we want, to, we want this little bit that we're building to also run with the greater, larger application as well. So we build tests to ensure that that's going to happen. And when you might hear the CI bit, and it's called continuous integration, the continuous integration aspect of it is, is that I want to be able to continuously keep developing locally and continuously be able to open up pull requests and have that validated by those tests, by that linting rule and have that feedback um, as fast as possible and as often as possible. So that's really the goal here. So the CI part of it is really, really that simple. You know, you, you want to be able to open pull requests. You want to have those tests be automatically executed. You want to have that feedback and then you know whether or not it's good or bad and what you need to fix to move ahead. So there's also the aspect of once it's actually merged into the main line, you're going to have a different set of tests run. And this is all still part of that CI world. You know, it's continuously integrating it in there and doing some tests that associate with CI. So we'll go through about that in this series a little bit and cover that, but that's, that's really the basis of what you need to know about CI. So CD or continuous deployment, um, which is actually different from continuous delivery, which we'll talk about in this series also, um, picks up where CI leaves off, right? CI is responsible for doing all these tests and creating all of the things that are associated with that package, you know, creating that package um, that is necessary for the continuous deployment tool to pick that package up and then deploy it out to the environments that need to be, right? We only build it once, we deploy it as many times as we need to to whatever environments are associated with. That's the, really the core concept of this as well, right? So continuous deployment is going to pick up that package that the CI tool created as the final result of all the tests compiling and everything running well and deploy that out in an automated fashion to the environments that are associated with that specific project, right? So I might have a staging environment or a testing environment, I have an acceptance environment and then a production environment. The continuous deployment tool is responsible for picking up that package, deploying it out, handling all the things like connection draining, load balances, associated application installs, validation, all that sort of stuff that comes into it, right? So that's pretty much the, 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 the TLDR version of CI and CD and we'll cover them a hell of a lot more throughout this series anyway. But I want to have a quick look at this chart that I've put together here, just this little diagram rather, um, because I think it sums up, you know, a couple of things that I want to go through in this series. So we're going to be building an application locally here uh, and we're going to be developing this locally here and it's going to be a Python uh, Flask web application. It's actually already developed, but I've already, I want to sort of go through the idea of deploying it and, see, and, and running through the CI aspects as well. Um, but here you see the local development part, right? So I have things like unit testing down here. This is you know, this is really fundamental. I can run unit tests locally on my application to ensure that, you know, it's going to be okay and, and it gives me a little bit more confidence, right? Because what we're doing is really instilling confidence. This is, this is one of the core principles of CI 
um, is that we you know, make our developers confident that what they're doing is going to work. So things like linting, of course, as well, we can do all that locally. Um, and the functionality, I can spawn up a web server locally and get the feedback for myself to say, you know, I think this is pretty good. So what I'm going to do from there, once I've done all this and I'm happy with that, is I'm going to do a pull request uh, into the master branch. So from the branch that I'm working on, which is the development branch, um, or whatever, whatever feature I'm working on is, is named appropriately, um, I'm going to do a pull request into the master branch because I want to integrate my code into the master branch. So then what we're going to do is we're going to have an automated process that gets kicked off as soon as I create that pull request because that's going to create a webhook to our tool. And in this case, our tool is going to be uh, AWS code build and AWS code deploy for deployment. And we'll talk about more of that later. Um, but our tool is going to kick off a set of automated steps, right? And one of them is going to be to install the packages that are associated with this application. Um, to execute the test suite, you know, to go through that linting, to make sure that what I went through locally, it's going to go through the same thing up there to ensure that from a very blank sort of um, black box standpoint, everything looks good. So it's going to do the unit tests. And then I'm going to have things like comments from my, my colleague developers. And then I can get feedback from my colleagues about what they think about the pull request from a sanity check point of view. Hey, like, what do you think about this? And they can do comments in there to further sort of validate everything looks good. So once that's actually merged, so you can see the merge to master branch, then we're going to have the final product get built and get ready to be shipped, right? That zip file is going to be created or whatever sort of uh, packaging we use. And let's just say it's a zip file. It's going to be uh, created for us. And the way it's going to do that is go through that same process, right? It's going to install those packages again. It's going to build the product. So it's going to whatever, whatever um, sort of framework you happen to be using or library or language is going to have different ways of building an application. So in this sense, we're going to build it um, and then we're going to create the artifact from that. So an artifact is essentially the output of that, that build, right? So we produce a final zip file, which would be our artifact, which contains everything that's needed for our application to run. And then we create a release from that. So the release has a version, it has a name, it has uh, things that are associated with it. Um, and we create that official release in our build tool. And then we can sort of push that to a feed or upload that to a location that is sort of a handoff point between the CI aspect and the picking up aspect of the CD tool. And it's going to pick that up and sort of work out how to deploy it and handle that for us here. So once it's been merged, we're going to go through the, the idea of just building everything, getting everything sorted, getting it all ready to roll, versioned and zipped up. And then it's going to be pushed somewhere where a deployment tool can pick it up and go through the deploying of that application. So things are about things like the, the deployment scenario here, the load balancer draining, connection handling, the actual application install. What does it need to even run on the OS layer to install it? Um, you know, and this is of course in a staging or testing environment. So this is this is a really important thing. We always deploy to a staging or testing environment first, so we can get that feedback from our customers or feedback from other applications to see how it sort of handles uh, that level, right? Are our applications able to consume this new endpoint, or are our end users able to consume this new endpoint? Um, you know, that's all the stuff that we really want to check in the testing and staging environment before we even talk about promotion, which is our last point down here, where we might promote the application into the next environment, which could be acceptance or it could be production even. So this is sort of a basic layout of what I want to go through in this tutorial series. Um, I think it's going to be really fun. We're going to be talking about AWS code build for our building, AWS code deploy for deploying applications. Uh, we're also going to be using code pipeline, which is a nice way to visualize each step of your pipeline. So, you know, if you think of this as our pipeline, we're going to be able to visualize this in an uh, overview in a dashboard in AWS and see in real time what bits are happening where uh, and also really get a feedback for what's happening at each point. And our developers can sort of see that thing too. So we're going to be using a Flask web application that I've created here locally. So let's go ahead and launch that just so you get an idea of what the application looks like that we're going to be uh, building this pipeline around. So we can just launch our application and there we have our background process running. So all I need to do is simply hit 000, 000, 000 5000. And here is our application called Flaskarino. So Flaskarino uh, is a you know, bit of a respect out to Ned Flanders. Um, Flaskarino, this is actually just written in Flask, like I said, um, and all this application does is just show some pictures of Ned Flanders, right? That's all it is. It's very, very basic. Um, you can just click on a picture and you get the, the little title here and the picture in a larger sense, right? So a very basic Flask application. This is what we're going to be using. This is what we're going to be deploying. Um, this is it running locally at the moment. 
Now I've created a basic set of tests and some linting rules for this application as well, which we're going to be using as part of our CI pipeline. Um, and what we're going to do is we can actually take a quick look at those now uh, and you'll see them here. I've actually created a tests folder and then we have some associated tests, right? So I wanna make sure my actual main page gives a 200, right? That's really important. Um, I wanna make sure that slash index gives a 200. I wanna make sure that uh, slash fail gives a 404 because there's no slash, slash fail. So sort of testing the inner workings of my application to make sure that it is working as intended. Um, I'm going to call the fetch images, which is actually returning the images of Ned Flanders to the uh, web page there. Um, and I wanna make sure that the length of that is four because I should only have four images at this point. Um, so a bit of a, an arbitrary test there, um, but I just wanna have a few tests so that we can sort of put that through our pipeline. Um, and I also wanna make sure that all of the width of my images are no larger than 500 pixels. So I'm just going to for each um, through those pictures and make sure that they're all a certain size. Right, very, very basic set of tests, um, but this is something that we need to add in because we're going to have to have tests to improve the, um, the quality and ensure the confidence in ourselves and our developers um, that they are also following along with these lines of, uh, of, my, of thought that were created by the team when we created the project. I also have a set of linting rules that I wanna go by as well. So we can use PyLint here to sort of go over our project to ensure that our linting is up to date and up to standard and that we're all happy with the way that we're writing code. So this is also gonna be part of our CI pipeline as well. So that covers probably everything we need to know about the first little introduction clip here. Um, I'll save the actual building of the pipelines for the later uh, clips in this tutorial, um, but that's just an introduction to what we're gonna be doing in this tutorial series. The application itself, a little bit of a, you know, hey, we're just running this locally now, we're gonna build everything we need to build this uh, on and have it running on. Um, and also a little bit of an overview of the tests that we have and the fact that we just have some linting in place. So a bit of a, a bit of an overview of what we're gonna be covering in this series. I hope you guys stick around and hopefully you learn something from it. But in the next clip, we'll set up the pipeline and set up the start of it and set up our staging environment so we can get that application rolling as fast as possible.